Right, tomorrow. One of my favourite dates in the fishing calendar. All you course anglers get very excited about June the 16th, but for me, May the 15th is just as exciting. It is the start of mullet spinning season for me. Um, because of the rules and regs on Christchurch Harbour with regards to spinning, because of the salmon and sea trout in there, we're not allowed to spin until May the 15th. Um, tomorrow is May the 15th. Woohoo! Mullet on. Um, so that's, you know, that's the rest of my summer sorted. Um, but I thought actually I want to do a quick video just to give you a, a bit of a rundown on the gear that I use. So anybody new to mullet spinning or a bit of a refresher course for those who haven't done it for a while maybe. And I also wanted to redo the section on how to tie the mullet spinner. Because the video I did a few years ago, there's actually a couple of little things I've changed. So I wanted to update that as well. Okay, before we get into the technical bit of how to tie the spinner, a uh, quick look at my rod and reel. Right, I'm using a Savage Gear SG2. This is the 8 foot 11, 3 to 15 gram. Now that, that's a slightly outside the usual spinning rod. Um, 3 to 15 gram, nothing unusual about that, but normally on the lighter casting rated rods, they're usually much shorter, sort of 7.2, 7.6, that sort of thing. Um, I found a longer one. I prefer a longer rod when I'm constantly casting those MEPs. Um, I like the control and the fight you get with it as well. You can obviously use, if you've got a 7276, anything like that, in a nice light rated rod, then absolutely use it. Um, but if you ever want to treat yourself to a nice mullet specific rod, um, the Savage Gear SD2 in the 2.7 meter, 3 to 15 gram is my tool of choice. Um, 3 to 15 gram, that suits the MEPs that we're going to be spit, we're casting. Um, most of those MEPs are pretty light, sort of 7, 8, 9 grams, that sort of thing. Um, so that is absolutely perfect. If you've got something sort of 5 to 20, something around that sort of casting rating is what you like. Um, the one thing I would recommend on your rod, whichever one you choose, try and pick a, a, a tubular tip rod, not a solid tip, not a hybrid splice tip. And um, I much prefer that for constantly casting. Uh, reel wise, I've actually got a 3000 size reel on this. A lot of people will think you know, it's a nice small reel, a sort of a 2000, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I actually prefer a slightly larger reel, because again, sometimes you are trying to get that maps as far as you possibly can. Um, so the smaller the reel, I just think losing a couple of extra yards. So I've gone with a 3000 size wheel um, on, on my 8 foot 11 there. I think it balances out quite nicely on that rod anyway. Um, but again, if you've got like a 2500 or even a 2000, it will do. Um, I've got loaded up with a nice bit of light braid, that's 16 pound braid. Um, again, anything, I tend to not go too much lighter than around 15. Um, you can use 12 if you like. Um, I wouldn't go any higher than 20, but for me, it's sort of 15, 16 pound, spot on. On the business end, I've got a slightly longer leader than normal. All my bass spinning and that sort of thing, I use a two foot fluorocarbon leader. Um, I've actually got a three foot fluorocarbon leader on this one. Um, I'm actually using the, there you go, the Seaguard Junior number four, which is 0.33. I love that leader. Um, on the business end, I've got a number one uh, match rig clip, that's actually one of our own match rig clips. Lovely lightweight little clip. And interestingly, I actually use a Stompho knot cover on, uh, on the end of that. Covers the clip. Uh, the reason why I do that, I only do this with mullet spinning, um, is because when I've clipped my spinner on, I push the knot cover over the top of that clip, and it just covers that open part of the clip, because the tail of the spinner sometimes comes up and can catch into your clip. So just using a little knot cover over your clip alleviates that problem. So that's the rod, the reel and the line. Right. Let's tie a mullet spinner. First thing you're going to need is a MEPS spinner. Um, I would recommend either a size 3 or size 4. I seem to tend to use more 4s than anything nowadays. I think back in the day I used to use more 3s, but you'll find your own particular favourite, but you won't go too far wrong with either a 3 or 4. Colour-wise is entirely down to you. Now, the more you'll do this, the more you'll sort of settle into a favourite of your own, or you might find that some colours work better in certain lights and that sort of thing. But um, for me, this one, this orange, Aglia E orange, has become a real favourite of mine over the last couple of seasons. I think before that it was a red dot silver, wasn't it? So I have mixed up a little bit. Um, so we also need some. Now, for the end hook, I use a Sakuma Manta size 6. I've very much settled on that hook now. I've chopped and changed over the years, tried loads of different hooks. I found this to be my favourite one. I've been using this for, I think, this to be my third season now. Um, it's just the right balance of, of fine, sharp, so you're going to set that hook, but strong enough. Love that. Um, 
top hook, that's not changed at all. That's a size six wormer. Um, held on with a little bit of 0.5mm silicon tubing, so that's not changed again. One of the main things that has changed is actually the line I'm going to use. Now, I used to use much lighter line. I think my original video I did a 0.28, sort of £10 fluorocarbon. Um, I've moved right up now to um, the number 5 Seaguard Junior, which is a 0.37. Um, so that's going to give you around sort of 18 to £20. Um, now why? Why have I gone so heavy, I hear you ask? Um, nothing to do with the fact that I'm catching enormous mullet. Um, it's just actually to do with the fact that the heavier you go, the less spin and twist you get. I was always under the impression that we had to go fine and light to get the mullet to take. Um, but actually, as I've gone heavier and heavier with the line, I found that my catch rate hasn't dropped at all. You just get a lot less tangles. So there we go, that would be my main recommendation from my last video. It's going a little bit heavier than I originally suggested. If you've all watched the original video and just tied up all your uh, spinners with £10, I apologise in advance. Right, so first thing to do is get that lovely new shiny maps that you've just purchased and hack the treble off. When you're cutting the treble off, make sure you cut the eye of the hook, not the eye of the spinner which is just behind it. So, chop that off. Be gone with your treble and you are no longer needed. Right, now we have a hookless maps. Get your little bit of fluorocarbon. Tie on whichever knot you particularly fancy. I always like a, a half blood knot. And trim. Now I cut this to six inches. So it will be a little bit shorter than that uh, once we finish tying it. So again, that's slightly different to my original video. I think we used to do them a little bit longer. Again, I've just sort of chopped and changed over the years and I think I've settled with this length now. So six inches of fluorocarbon line. Get your 0.5 mil silicon tube and chop off a piece around about sort of five or six mil long. Thread that onto your fluorocarbon line. He says. I'll get some new eyes one day. Right, there we go. Spinner, line, a little bit of silicon tubing. Now, wormer hook, slightly bent up eye, okay? So we're gonna pass the line going from the back up the hook like so. So it sits like that. Once you've got to this stage, you just wanna twist and push that little bit of silicon tubing onto the bend, no, onto the shank, sorry, of that wormer hook, just like that. If you're struggling to get it on, just learn that twist, learn that twist as you push, and it will just go on. So hopefully you can see that. And then last, but by no means least, we tie that Sakuma Manta on to the end. Trim your knot as tight as you can. And there we go. That is that. That is our mullet spinner ready to go. So we've got our, actually how long is that? That is, probably comes out about five inches once you've tied and trimmed and that sort of thing. About five inch tail, size six Akuma Manta, size six Wormer, held in place with a 0.5 mil silicon tubing to my number four maps. The reason why we use a bit of tubing there is so we can adjust that up and down that hook link. So depending on the length of the worm you're using, you can just adjust that accordingly. Nice and simple. Right, next recommendation. Best way of storing MEP spinners is in a foam rig box. Um, it keeps them nice and straight, keeps that tail really nice and straight and stretched out. Um, we've got in stock the HTO double latch box. 20.5 by 15 by three and a half centimeters. There we go, that one anyway. <laughs> I've got plenty of those in stock and on the website. So if you did want to buy one, they're there and available. All you need to do is get your hook, hook it in the foam, get yourself a, a little winder pin and just pin the top of the spinner in place. There we go. Hopefully that's uh, relatively simple. So pin at the top, nice and straight. I kind of stretched it, pulled it quite, quite well. So that really stretches and straightens out that tail. So every time you go fishing, take your spinner out and the tail is perfect. 
My next uh, essential tool, I think, for mullet fishing is a decent baiting needle. Um, I think by far the best for this is the Stompho Red Point, okay? So these ones have a sort of a reddy orange point to them. There's a white point one as well, which is much finer. You don't need that one. So the Stompho Red Point are my favorite. That makes baiting up the, the fine, small little ragworms or the, the isome worms much, much easier. And they do, quite happily, live in my box. Whilst we're on the subject of worms, bait is obviously essential for this. Uh, fresh ragworms, live ragworms, is an excellent bait. Not always readily available. It's been a terrible start to the year for live bait. Um, but fear not, if we can't get any, these work exceptionally well. Um, this is the Maruku Isome worms. We did a really fun video last year, the fake versus real mullet challenge. Again, I'll put a link. Which side does it come up? I can't remember. Uh, this side. Um, yeah, I'll put a little link. Check out that video. That was loads of fun and it proved how well the fake ragworm does work. Um, when you're purchasing these, if you're going to purchase the, the large standard size Maruku Isome worms, go with the large. Uh, where are we? The large, whatever colour you fancy, all the colours work. Um, or if you're going to use the mini isomes, again, the large size is ideal. Right, last couple of items that I like to use. Um, firstly, one of my favourite things from last year is the HTO weigh and measure mat. This is an absolutely brilliant bit of kit. First of all, it doubles up as your unhooking mat. So when you're putting that fish on the deck, it protects that fish. It's a nice, soft, delicate mat for it rather than putting it on the hard hot stones. Um, it's got a measure inside it so you can give it a length easily and then it also doubles up as your waistling. Brilliant bit of kit and it all folds up super easily. It weighs just a few grams, clip it onto your rucksack and that's your unhooking mat and your measure and your waistling all in one thing. I love that bit of kit. And lastly, this is a little bit, you might laugh at me at this one, but I don't care. Laugh away. A little worm box. What I use this for, I like to wade sometimes. I like to wade, go out in my chest waders or in the, in the heat of summer, just out in my flip-flops and shorts. Um, but when you're out there spinning away, spinning away, and your bait's all the way back there on the shore, the amount of times I overspin, I don't change that worm regularly enough, and I've just got a washed out, skinny bit of worm left because I can't be bothered to go and get a fresh one. These little pots, handful of worms in there, just clip onto your belt. So when you're out there wading away, just do 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 do, new worm out, fresh worm, guaranteed to catch a fish on the next cast. Right, I think that covers everything. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll give it a go this season. It is loads of fun, honestly. It's also brilliant for taking kids fishing. Um, so if you've got youngsters in your household, it's a little light rod, it's something they can do themselves and hopefully catch some really impressive fish. Um, it really is a lot of fun, give it a go. It's really cheap. Once you're set up, you can go fishing for a couple of quid, two or three hours in the evening, catch some really hard fighting fish um, and have loads of fun. It's a wonderful way to kill a few hours in the summer.